Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Hi everyone, welcome to this webinar. Today we're going to talk all about customer service and I'm super excited to be here. More importantly, we're going to make sure we dedicate a majority of the webinar to get really deep into the app and show you demos of our solution so that you can firsthand see how easy to use this is. Desk.com is one of Salesforce products that's uniquely designed to help our customers deliver fast, awesome customer service to their end customers. And it's great because it's really easy for you to scale the support um, so that you can uh, your support can grow with your small business. My name is Kira Cho, and I'm part of the product marketing team here at Desk. Next to me, I have the rock star sales engineer, Kevin Ives, next to me. Say hello to everyone, Kevin. Hey, how's it going, everyone? And even though this webinar um, is not a face-to-face -face experience, we want to make sure uh, we make this as interactive as possible. So if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please um, at mention us on Twitter, get social with us. If there are different quotes or different facts that you feel is very thought-provoking, you can share that with your network and please use the hashtag CustervWins. We'll also have a live Q&A at the end of the session. We'll dedicate about 10 minutes, and really depending on how many questions that come through, we might extend it. So we just wanna make sure we get all of your questions answered, and again, make this as interactive as possible. So there's the GoToWebinar um, panel on the right-hand side where you can enter your questions. The program today will last about 30 minutes. The content will be for half an hour, and then we'll dedicate the 10 minutes at the end for live Q&A. And if you can't stay with us today, don't worry. This whole um, program will be recorded and we'll send you a link after the webinar. We'll also post this via our social channels so that you can share it, listen to it, do whatever you want to it. So we're here today to talk about the importance of customer service. We all know that every company has customer service. So really the question becomes, who can do it best? And what happens when your customers are unhappy? Well, bad customer service, well, really sorry to say, it's going to cost your company money and hurt your bottom line. Here's some telling stats that will validate that claim that I just made. Stat number two, I love this because your customers are literally a tweet away from talking about a bad experience they have with you. And as customers, we now have options when we are unhappy. And the simple option is for us to leave and do business with someone else. And we know that this is extremely hard for small businesses because small businesses face some unique support challenges. There's never enough time to get anything done. And let's be real, there's never enough resources to go around. With limited resources, it's extremely easy for small businesses with a small support team to start using a shared Gmail inbox to um, address some of the emails that are coming in for their support. But eventually, this inbox is going to get super overwhelming. If you have multiple people answering to emails, you might be answering to emails at the same time. Your answer might not be consistent back to your customer. And to top this all off, you're going to get a ton of emails and you're literally just going to be drowning in email. And email is just one of the channels that our customers are interacting with you from. There are also phone, there's the social channels, Facebook, Twitter, discussion boards, forums, and things like that. What about customers reaching out to you via your very own website? All of those are channels that your customers are now expecting you to be on. And when you have no process in place, it's extremely hard for you to get back to your customers fast. And you're busy, you're always on the go. So customer service should never stop even when you're not on the go. So that was the previous uh, mobile uh, graphic. So let's say that you have a simple system in place and you do a pretty comfortable job by giving your customers the support that they need. Do you have all the tools at your fingertips that make responding to customers super, super fast and super easy for your agents to do so? So there are things and there are things like shortcuts or pre-canned responses that we call macros and we'll show you in the app later on um, that make responding to cases and responding to bulk cases uh, very, very easy. And do you have things like a single source of truth so that when your agents are looking for the most consistent answer, they can always find that at the right place at the right moment and 
ship those answers out to your customers. In customer service, customers only want to reach out to you when they want to reach out to you. No one wants to pick up the phone every time when they have a question. So it's very crucial for you to have an FAQ section on your site that addresses all of your customers' concerns. And lastly, to wrap all of this up, your support center can't improve if you can't really measure on the things that are very important to you. You need to start looking at things like how many cases are coming in, how long it's taking me or my agents to respond to them, and are my customers actually happy with the service that I'm providing to them? And if they are, why are they happy? If they're not, what are some of the things that I can improve upon? Lucky for us, Desk is really the solution that becomes a solution for some of the small business challenges that we were talking about just now. Desk.com is an all-in-one customer support solution specifically designed for fast-growing companies and small businesses. This solution contains all of the service features a small support team will need in order for them to provide excellent customer service. So it's extremely easy for you to get up and running. We'll even show you how easy it is in the demo in a few minutes. It's really optimized for the support process. And so we have built-in productivity tools, a knowledge base that you can easily uh, start to curate all your content. All of those come right out of the box. And lastly, we talked a little bit about metrics and dashboards and reporting. We also have those right out of the box for you from desk.com. And desk.com really is built for speed so that you can get up and running really quickly so you can start churning through all the cases that are coming in. In fact, Kevin is going to show us how easy it is to get set up. Literally, it takes minutes for you to get synced up to your email account, whatever that support email is. But the point is, Everything is really easy to use in desk.com. It's very intuitive. But going fast is only one part of the equation. To make sure that you're catching every customer request, desk.com has this concept called a universal inbox, where it pulls all of your support cases from different channels into the centralized place. So you can see all of your cases at a glance, and you can, see, um, you can start to prioritize and route things correctly. And we know that you're busy, you're always on the go, so we have a mobile app that um, can allow you to start responding to cases when you're on the go, escalate a case even when you're not at your desk. So um, things are very easy for you even when you're not at your desk. And we have a lot of productivity tools that come right out of the box. So for example, a macro, it's one of my favorites and it's a lot of our customers' favorite. A macro, for those of you that are not familiar with this concept, it's a shortcut that allows an agent to perform multiple actions with just one click. So within that single click, you can do things like populate a pre-can response and automatically change the status of a case and also resolve a case, literally all with just one click. All this is built in because we know that you don't have time to go through each cases. And so we want to make this experience as easy and um, easy to use and productive for your agents as possible. And what that means is that you can do more without hiring more people. And here are some live examples of our help centers. This concept of self-service is all about case deflections. Um, these live examples are built from our desk.com templates. It's really easy for you to use. Again, Kevin will show you how to use it later on in a few minutes. Um, the desk.com knowledge base allows customers to come find answers on their own. So the example when I give when I have an issue, I don't always want to have to pick up the phone. Something as simple as a password reset, I can simply find this on a company's website. And the reporting that we have is almost everything that you need to know about your business and customers from a support perspective. Business Insights is our key to evaluating your support organiza organization's performance. You'll have um, KPIs like first ticket resolution time to first contact resolution rates. All of that is out of the box. From there, businesses can take this insight and really impact um, their product or bring some of that insight back to the different teams within the organization. So for example, if you um, just put out a new release and your customers are complaining about it, you can immediately take that insight, bring it back to your product or engineering team and have them fix the issue right away. 
So without further ado, I want to show all of you uh, desk in action. So Kevin, take it away and show us a wonderful demo. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and pull up our demo here. <clears throat> Alright, so for today we're going to um, start in the customer facing portal. Um, so we're going to show you a, co um, a couple examples of some of our customers, what they've done with our help center and how they've rebranded that, some of the functionality there. We'll transition into a help center we built out for the purposes of today. Um, from there, we'll, we'll submit a case, see the agent council and, and the life of an agent, um, kind of some of the efficiency tools that, that Kira pointed out or mentioned earlier. Um, then from there, we will go into um, reporting. And lastly, we'll be closing, kind of taking a look at the admin and how some of these things are set up. All right, so first off, we have BarkBox, and they're a great customer of ours, um, done, and they've done a lot to really rebrand and keep their, their, their company's like feel um, with their help center. So when I'm on their, their desk.com help center and you know, I'm, I'm a customer and I'm looking for the answer to my question, I really feel like I'm, I'm still a part of um, the BarkBox um, website, and I'm, I'm interacting with them as, as a great company. Frequently arced questions. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> exactly. Um, so first we can see um, at the top here, they have rebranded their URL. So um, doesn't have anything with desk in there. It's, it's completely branded to, to BarkBox. Um, down below, we have our nice um, intuitive search bar um, where we can search for, for issues and, and our questions right, right within this box. Um, for example, if I had a billing issue, I could go ahead, type in, and then we'll start um, suggesting some articles that, that might be relevant, um, and then I can you know, click on any of these or perform the search. Down below, um, they've decided to organize their content into topics. Um, so we have some different topics here, and if we can click, or we can click on into any of these, and we can see that they have then articles um, underneath each of these topics. So this is just kind of an example of how you could you could have your support center and just just want to show off how how much it can be rebranded so that you can really keep that look and feel from your from your website and from your company um, to your help center. Next, I want to transition over into Zep Labs. The reason why I wanted to show Zep here is because they're using a, our multi-brand functionality, which is a it's a pretty cool feature. Um, now, our multi-brand functionality, what that what that allows you to do is it allows you to have several different um, help centers um, with, with their own URL, and and they all connect to one backend desk.com tool. So you can have several different help centers that you know serve different needs, but then all of the cases that are created and that management of that help center is all done with with one um, site um, on, on the back end. Now, what they've done here is they've actually made each of their different products a different um, help center. And this allows them to do a couple of cool things. One, um, when we drill on down in here, it's nice and organized. They have each of their different topics. It's easier for them to admin on the back end um, in terms of what article is, is appropriate for, for which product and that sort of stuff. But what's also nice is that um, it helps them fine tune their, their search results and the content that's being delivered to um, their customers. So if I'm a customer here and I click on the support um, for baseball and I run a search, I'm only running a search on content and articles that are relevant to this brand or in this case, this product, um, baseball. And that way, you know, I'm not seeing a bunch of content in my search results that aren't relevant to what I'm looking for. So this is an example of how you can use our multi-brand in kind of a, a unique way um, to really fine tune um, those search results and deliver a, a nice customer experience. All right, let's switch on over to the help center that we have built out for today. Um, so this is kind of the, the basic out-of-the-box template. Um, underneath, we have our, um, our articles, which are organized under topics. We can drill on down into these articles. And this is an example of the different um, content you can have. And one of the things you can have here is rich media. Um, so, you know, you can embed those videos, embed those images, um, I know personally that I'm more likely to watch a video or read an image than to re or watch a video or see an image than to read a bunch of text. Um, so adding that rich media really engages your customers a bit more with your help center content and really ensures that they, you know, encourages them to use that and don't open a, a case or ticket um, with your support team. Another thing I want to point out is that um, as a customer, I can provide feedback um, on whether this article is helpful or not. Um, so that way you can get an idea of, you know, what articles are, are helpful, which ones you need to revise um, and that sort of stuff. 
I do want to show um, one feature within the Help Center, um, which is the My Cases. So, for example, you know, I'm a customer. I've gone through the Help Center, but I still had to submit a case. And now I want to go back and I want to check in. Uh, you know, where is that case at? You know, how many cases do I have open? What's going on? So I, as a customer, um, I'm already logged in as Bob um, Foster here, can go to My Cases, and I can see all the past cases that I've submitted. Looks like I have one um, case that's in the pending status and another one that's been resolved. I can filter these down to the last seven days, the last 30 days, and I can even apply a filter to only see the active cases that I have open. From here, I can create a new case, or I can drill on down into any of these cases and you know, um, add, an, add a new response if I, if I you know, want somebody to take a look at it or I have additional information to add. Um, I can also resolve the, the case if, if I've found the issue um, or solve the, pro the problem myself. I can resolve it and not have to have your agents worry about it. All right. So from the Help Center, it's a great place where you can get, you know, a lot of content, find the answers to questions yourselves, you know, take a look at your past cases, but you can also create new cases. And, and the Help Center is a great channel um, that um, your customers can reach out to you through. So first, um, we have post a public question. And these are your, your, your kind of public forums. Um, from here, you know, you can build that, that community and you can have that, those customers, you know, speaking back and forth, as well as it does create a case um, in your back end tool so that your agents can quickly and easily see all the new comments coming in. Um, if there's anything negative, they'll be able to immediately hide that or remove that from the forum um, to really make sure that you're delivering that, that consistent and good customer experience. And you can also, and because it creates a case, you can have it go through workflows, and you can also um, start reporting on it, and you can see your metrics around your public forum. Another thing that we have is our live chat, which is, you know, again, it's a native channel, channel of desk.com. It's going to create a case just like all the others, and this chat is going to be right um, in with all of your other emails, so that way your agents can quickly and easily identify um, the new chats that come in because chat is a is a channel that you really need to respond to quickly. You can't have a chat um, without an agent responding, you know, just kind of lingering out there. Um, otherwise, that's going to be a bad customer experience. So with our chat, it creates a case. It comes right on in, um, and your agents can, can handle that right away. But for today, we're going to just use the email us form. Um, and that's just a form um, on the Help Center. And you can fill that on out, and it will submit a case. So I'm actually going to jump on over to a form that I've pre-filled out. Um, just to save us a little bit of time. Now on here, we have a, you know, a subject and a message, but this can be customized. And so you can ask some additional questions about, um, up front, which really helps reduce the, the amount of back and forth. One thing I do want to point out is that to the right, we do have um, uh, we do do another pass on the help center. So as the as your customer fills out the um, the, con the subject and the message, um, we do another pass on the help center to see if there's any relevant articles or um, something that, that might be able to answer their question just to, to help increase that case deflection and just encourage people to find the answers to the question themselves without having to create that case, reducing the stress on your support team. Let's go ahead and submit this case, um, even though it does look like there is an article that will help us out. So I'm going to send that in. And here we have a bit more of an aggressive um, deflection. So, I mean, it's up to you. And if you want to have a little bit more passive one, which kind of just shows, appears off to the right, or, you know, this this more aggressive one where you have to actually click through it, um, you can have both. You can have one or the other. It's up to you. Um, but we, we really believe in the case deflection and, and think that it, it does a lot in, in being able to deliver good customer experience and reduce the amount of cases and stress on your support team. Let's go ahead and submit this. All right, so let's jump into the agent interface here, um, and we can see that um, the, oops, looks like I got logged out of my account here. Oops, sorry about this, guys. Let me go ahead and resubmit that. Oops. Yeah. Alrighty. 
Live demos always work out well. Nice. <laughs> okay. Um, so here, here we go. Um, so we can see this is the agent console. So transitioning, um, you know, before we were taking a look at that help center and how customers can help themselves engage with you as a company. Um, here is the the agent console and where your agents are going to live and respond to cases. So at the left here, we have our, our list of filters. And our filters are essentially queues. Um, they're, they can be customized. You can decide who has access to which queues. Um, so that way, you know, your agents are only seeing the relevant cases to them. Um, but it's a great way to kind of make sure that you build out um, the different filters and really make sure that your agents can easily and quickly identify the cases that are relevant to them. Um, that way, you know, they're not searching around to, to look for the customer inquiries and they can get to them right away. Off to the right, you can see that we have our cases here, and it looks a bit like an email inbox. And we want to make this as intuitive and easy for you guys to use, um, so we try to, to kind of build off of those themes. And we can see some additional things immediately, though, right away. So first off, we have our different statuses. We have our different CSAT scores. So these are um, conversations that, that kind of have been going back and forth with the customer, and the customer has provided us some feedback on the quality of our response. So when we get into the reporting piece, you're going to see that we can run metrics around these and we can you know, get a, a nice view of these. But we also deliver it to your agents. Um, that way, you know, your agents can gauge the temperature of the customer right away. Um, so I'm, as an agent, I can see, oh, it looks like uh, Mark here isn't too happy. I should probably respond to him more quickly or maybe handle his case a little bit differently. Then off to the right, we have our different channels. Looks like we have a, a Twitter and a phone case in here. But um, this just allows your, your um, agents to quickly identify the channel that the case came in. One thing that I did want to point out is that we do have labels as well. We can see that um, the label um, was applied to this case automatically as soon as it came in. So um, Bob here is a VIP customer in he, that his, he's been marked as a VIP customer so that when his cases come in, they're automatically labeled for your agents to quickly and easily identify um, these cases and can respond to them a bit more quickly. Um, and we can also see that we have some nice um, aging cases labels, so it can be applied um, to cases that you know, haven't been responded to in, some while, in a while, just so nothing slips through the cracks. Let's drill on down into the case itself. usually never happens for me. Maybe it's the internet. Must be the internet. Yep. Blame it on that every time. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. All right. So logged logged on into the um, help center, and we can see we can see the case here. So there's a couple of things I wanted to point out. First, you get a lot of information up front. We have our case details, um, things like the the group um, it's assigned to, um, labels, and then we also have the customer information, and then the um, content that came in. Um, through the through the post, and we get all this information up front without having to do any clicks. Well, Kevin, actually, a question came in earlier about the Salesforce integration. Can you talk a little bit about that widget on the left hand side? Sure. So this widget pulls in information from Salesforce, so you can see things like um, from any opportunities and, and information from the from Salesforce. But not only can we can we to have this read-only kind of view of information from Salesforce, any of the fields that you see here can actually be mapped directly to fields within um, Salesforce and on the, the case, contact, and account standard objects. So um, you can map those things um, back and forth, and that way you keep things really in sync between the two systems. Um, any update that happens in desk will immediately be reflected within Salesforce, and then any updates in Salesforce are on a rolling five minutes um, coming back to desk. Um, so pretty in sync and just make sure that your support and sales team uh, are always working on with the latest information um, when, they, when they go and reach out to a customer. All right, so let's actually go through the process of responding to this case. So there's a couple of things we can do here. One, we can leave a note and we'll just go ahead and add that. And that's an internal note oops, on, the, on the case here and that will, and that's just an internal note um, is only viewable to um, people logged into the agent interface. It allows your team to collaborate around particular issues. Maybe I add that note and escalate it to our supervisor um, or team or something along those lines. Let's keep it here. Um, now, another thing that we can do as an agent is access that knowledge base. So as an agent, you know, I have that same access to that help center content as our customers. 
Um, and this really helps your team scale and grow because um, as you add in new people or bring in new people, having your agents being able to go to a place where they can really find their responses um, to questions um, themselves and really make sure that it's consistent um, with the rest of the answers really helps, helps your team scale and grow. One thing I did want to point out is we can actually see that we have a private article right here. Um, so this article is, is private, it's internal only. Um, so not only can you make content and articles um, that is published on your help center, but you can create content and articles that are internal only and um, allow, allow your agents to, to get that information. Maybe something that you don't want to make public, but is really valuable for your agents to know. But let's not use an article for today. We're actually going to use a macro to reply to this case. Um, so I can apply a macro by, by organizing them into folders and quickly you know, searching for them. Um, I can also start typing right here in the um, macro box in order to search for them and apply that. But as I'm you know, going through the interface and I get used to my macros a bit more, I can quickly do two pound signs and start typing. And that searches my list of macros. Apply enter to apply that to the case. And you can see that you know, we quickly put in a, a canned reply. It will have the customer's first name in there when we send that on out. And we've automatically changed the status to resolve and decrease the priority to low, just because you know these these types of issues are a little bit less um, of a priority for our support team. Let's go ahead and send um, that response, and we can send that on out, and then we can move on to the next case. One thing that we can do here is also search. So. A lot of times, you know, when you're when you're working on cases or you're going throughout your day, you need to f figure out, hey, what cases have I ever done in the past? I need to go back and view a past case. So what's nice about Desk is that we have this nice, intuitive, advanced search. So you can visually easily um, come in here and search on different criteria. You can do it on, you know, date created, um, on a particular subject or labels that have been applied. This allows you to really fine tune your search results to a specific set of cases. Let's, let's go ahead and move on over into our reporting piece. So this is um, reporting um, within desk.com. It's great and easy to use, and we give you a lot of information kind of out of the box and, and up front. So right here, I um, wanted to point out that we have a number of different reports. Um, we have things like the overview, labels, and custom fields reports, which show you information about your cases. You know, so overview are going to be your cases over time, and it's the information of it coming in. Um, labels is going to be, you know, like that VIP label. How many times has that VIP label been applied? Or that agent case label. What's the average resolution time for our agent cases? Um, and then also things around custom fields. We also have our groups and agent reports, which are going to give us information on our team, how our team is performing, um, that sort of stuff. And then we have things like our macros, um, segmentations, where segmentation you can start doing comparison um, graphs, and then you know things like our companies where you can start to see information around the companies that are, are submitting um, cases. I can easily um, select a date range um, for our particular um, report. Um, we have some nice preset times for you, or I can go ahead and just select any, any date range in here. I can also add a filter to any of my reports. So right now, in this overview report, we're just taking a look at all, all of our cases. But maybe I only want to see metrics for a particular subset of cases. And that and the filtering allows you to do that. I can build and and or conditions to really build out a complex filter to really take a look at the subset of cases that are really important for me. And then once I build out that, that graph, I can always add it to my favorites. Um, that way, I don't have to keep on building out that, that report every single time. Let's go down below, and we can see that there's there's a bit of information here. You know, um, we're taking a look at you know cases created, um, the resolve date, you know, average time to first response, average um, time to resolution, and when we scroll on over, we can see a number of different metrics here. One thing I wanted to point out is that we have a nice drill down um, feature. So when you're taking a look at something here, um, say average time to resolution, I can go ahead and I can actually drill on down into these cases that make up this metric. Um, so what this drill down feature allows you to do is, is at the high level, you can see, um, you know, kind of different trends about cases, you know, what's going on. And then, you know, maybe you identify a spike. Um, something isn't the way it should be. So you can drill on down into those particular cases. And then from here, I can, you know, maybe sort on resolution time. And I can find the, that outlier or, you know, figure out what's going on here. Is there an outlier or isn't there? Um, and if there is, you know, then I can actually click into these cases and see that case and kind of go through that case timeline, go through the interactions to try to figure out what's going on here. 
And in the interest of time, I'm going to move on over into the admin interface real quick. Just want to point out some, how easy it is to set up desk. So here um, is the admin interface. And the first thing I want to point out is that on your dashboard page, you have a number of, of guides um, or links. So, you know, when you first sign up for Desk, we really encourage you to go to our um, Getting Started Guides. Um, it takes about an hour to go through, and by the time you're done with it, you'll have a fully functional Desk system, and you'll know a lot about the tool and how you can start um, customizing it for yourself. We have our nice Teams tab. Um, so here's where you can go in and add new, add additional users. You can organize them into groups um, and kind of build out that. So this Channels tab is where you go and you set up all of your different channels. You know, so talking about you know those different brands, um, the support center, and you know adding your mailbox. Um, so here your desk site does come with its own email address that you can send emails to to create cases. Um, but you can also Add your own mailbox, and that's as simple as putting in your your email and password and um, connecting that. Here you can also um, do things like um, add, you know, turn on the chat channel and your thanks for chat. Um, integrate your your phone um, into Desk and add Twitter and Facebook. In the cases tab, um, you know, this is where you're going to kind of set the the meat of the tool. You know, we're going to do things like building out those different filters. Um, you know. Um, building out the, those different macros that our agents have and then also building out our different workflows um, in terms of you know what rules run when um, things like you know auto auto acknowledgements um, setting up those things and what's also nice are these time rules where you can we can do things like um, if questions are being answered in time you know start sending out notifications and start emailing people and then um, our content section is where you can go and manage your content. Um, you can easily add in new articles, select what brands they display on. Really allows you to to quickly manage your um, your content without having to do too much work. And then lastly, we have our apps page. So we integrate with a number of third-party applications, um, and here you can come on in and install any of those integrations um, with Desk.com. I'm going to turn it on back over to Kira um, to go through the rest of the PowerPoint. Thank you so much, Kevin. I think you did a fabulous job of uh, presenting the information and showing us how things work in the app. And in the interest of time, um, I've got two case studies that I put together, but these are available on our website, www.desk.com slash customers. Feel free to take a look at them. Um, I just want to make sure we get over to the Q&A so we get all of your burning questions in. So I uh, also want to go through that you know, if, if you really want to try this out, it's so easy. You just go to www.desk.com and download the free trial so that you can start getting set up in minutes, maximize your productivity with your agents, allow your customers to help themselves, and lastly, make better decisions so you can start taking actions on them. So... Thank you so much, everyone, for the overwhelming amount of questions. I was actually responding to a few during the webinar, so um, keep those questions coming. The first one I have is, is live chat available in the mobile device? Um, that It's not yet. Um, it's something that our team is working on, um, so something that we're going to be adding soon. Um, so um, definitely, definitely look out for that, um, but not quite yet. Um, is it, it's not available in the uh, mobile device. Yeah, and by soon, it's just a matter of months. It's not. It's, it's definitely in a roadmap, and I mm -hmm. know a lot of customers have asked us for this feature, so it's it's coming out. Just stay tuned for that. Is there pricing available? Absolutely. You can just visit our website, mm -hmm. desk.com, and uh, visit the pricing page. It's got different tiers uh, based on your business use case, so check that out there. Mm -hmm. Can agents work two cases at once? Um, so what we do is when an agent is in the case, um, we we actually allow or we, we signify to other agents that this person is actively in the case. And if anyone else goes into that case, it kind of enters a read only mode. Um, and the purposes of this is we really don't want people to be working uh, on the same case at the same time because they could conflict. Um, you know, we don't want you know, we want your agents to really spread out the workflow um, so that you're not both responding and doing duplicate work. Um, that being said, um, I mean, you can definitely, you know, add notes to cases and reassign them. I um, mean, you can have email notifications to, you know, hey, if a, if a note is added to your to a case that's assigned to you, um, let me know. And, you know, and you can collaborate that way on your cases um, and moving them around. 
Cool. So it looks like um, one of our attendees have set up for the free trial, but is there a developer account for Salesforce? Um, I'm not sure exactly what you're looking for. I would encourage you to reach out to either support or your uh, account manager, and we can definitely get you set up um, with all the resources you need. Um, we'd be happy to help you. Um, yeah, so set up anything that you need. So, so um, reach out to us. Yeah, reach out to us and we'd be happy to communicate. Support at desk.com. Mm -hmm. Cool. Let's talk a little bit about the partners and the API integrations that you showed in the last screen. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Like, what does the API do? How do you extend support to other critical parts of your business? And like, what's the importance of that? Yeah, so um, with, with Desk, we have um, our own API and that's available on any of our um, plans or any of our pricing plans. And it allows you to integrate Desk with other tools. Um, so a lot of the integrations that you saw um, on our apps page, they actually are built using the API. Um, now, now by by the um, because we have the integrations already pre-built, you don't have to do any coding or anything along those lines. You can just quickly and easily install those. Um, but say you have a custom um, backend system that you want to integrate with Desk, like an inventory management system for retail customers. Right? Yeah, that's a perfect example. And now we have this open API where you can actually go ahead and start pushing and pulling information um, into Desk and from Desk into your other tools. Nice. So let's talk a little bit about the Help Center. Uh, a, an attendee here has an e-commerce company that has customers in over 20 different countries, and obviously they all speak different languages. Um, does your support center capabilities support multilingual? It does. Um, so you can have different languages. Um, there's there's a number of different languages. I forget the actual count. I, I believe it's over 50 um, languages that we support. Um, and you know you can translate that that content and that help center. And a lot of the content and the the words that are kind of um, standard throughout your help center have actually been pre-translated for you. Um, so we really try to reduce the the amount of translations you need to do. Um, that being said, um, your actual content articles we leave up to you to translate because we really want to make sure that the translation is good. I mean, uh, Google Translate is great, but you definitely wouldn't want to have that uh, on your product or, or your website. So we're not going to automatically translate for, um, on those, but we definitely give you the option to provide those translations and really customize those translations, not just for the different languages, but also locations. Um, so you can customize your help center for the location that you're, that you're delivering it to. And speaking of multiple languages, our agent interface also comes in different languages as well. I believe uh, six right now, including English and Dutch is coming out yep. very, very shortly. Yep. Um, I also believe um, Portuguese is in there. If it's not, it's coming out very soon um, as well. Cool. What about reporting? Can you customize the reporting? Yeah. So, I mean, as we kind of kind of saw, um, I mean, you can add different filters and different um different ways to really narrow down your reports and get a lot of information out of desk. Um, so you can add those different filters. We have a lot of different graphs and metrics that you can take a look at. Um, and you can also export any of your information. All of those graphs can be exported into a CSV where you can you know, take it further doing additional pivot tables. You can export your cases. Um, so we really wanna make sure that you have access to your data so you can get the information and the reporting that, that you need to run your business. And I know a lot of you are using Salesforce for CRM, so all of the standard dashboard and reporting is also available on the Salesforce end as well. Yeah, because we, we push everything right into that case object. And we push a lot of information over there and we keep it really in sync. Um, so that really allows you to really use Salesforce reporting um, in a meaningful way. Um, and this is just you know great for a business because then you're starting to see support within context of the rest of your company. And it's not isolated to just support, just support metrics. What about phone? Can you put a phone in the Asian experience? Yeah, um, so um, phone is, is a major channel within Desk and we have a lot of um, different partners that we partner with um, that provide a phone and you can integrate them right into desk.com. They're actually all listed on our apps page, um, and it's um, you know it has a nice soft phone um, within the desk interface um, where your agents can respond and, and answer to the, those phone inquiries. Um, and that way, they never have to leave desk to handle the, those phones. Can you put a custom field on the main list of cases? Um, 
I think you're you're asking if um, when you're looking at that that filter view, um, can you add a custom field there? Um, right right now, we recommend using something like a label to provide that sort of visual indicator. Um, but that is something that um, we will be adding within that um, interface um, soon, um, so that you can add those custom field values there. How can I get a list of all unresolved cases for a company? A company that has multiple customers who can submit a case. Yeah, so um, I mean, as an agent, you could build a filter for that. You could also go into our search and search for all of those cases there. Um, there there's a number of different ways you can you can get a list for for all of those cases. I, I think it would probably be best um, to run a search and pull all of, you know assigned to or for a particular company that has a status that is new, open, or pending, um, and you can pull that up. You can even save your searches if you want to run them over and over. Um, that way it kind of saves you a little bit of time if this is a particular company that you're always looking at. What about when you're exporting information out of the reports? Can you get rid of some columns and eliminate some of those so that it, it doesn't spit out extra information? Yeah, so when you export like out of the reports, um, you can download those into CSV, um, which, I mean, from there, if there's some additional columns that you don't want, I mean, it's pretty easy to, to delete a column. Um, but when you're looking at the different rows, um, within desk, you can actually hide specific rows and collapse those. Um, it, this both makes it easier to view some reports within just the interface, um, but then when you export those, um, you'll have less information as well. Perfect. Well, I think we're out of time right now. Thank you everyone so much for joining and being so interactive with us. We love those questions. Uh, we'll be sure to reach out. I think there are a few questions that we didn't have time to go over. So we'll be sure to have someone reach out to you and get all of those answered. Again, thank you so much, everyone. And we hope that you continue to join our webinars and learn more about desk and best practices and customer.